Hi, this is Stacy Glenn with Royal Shell Real Estate, and we're going to talk about how to buy and sell a home in the same day. Yes, it's possible. It's not easy, but it is possible. So I'm going to tell you some steps today on the things that you need to be doing and thinking about when buying and selling a home in the same day. Step one, you need to talk to a real estate agent. You need to determine three things. Number one, how much equity do I have on my home? You need that number so that you can know how much you're going to have to put down on the next home. Second is how long do I expect my home to stay on the market? We call this days on market or DOM and it's the point from which it hits the market as an active listing to when a contract is executed. The third thing that you need to know is any repairs that you need to do. So the very first thing before you can get your house on the market is do any repairs or any prep work that needs to be done. And there's no point in going any further in the conversation until these items get addressed. Step two, determine your financial situation. There's a difference between needing to sell a home in order to buy your next home and just wanting to sell in order to buy. The difference is if you need to sell your home in order to buy, the bank is requiring you to sell that because they will not allow you to carry two mortgages at the same time. So they need to see that your home is closing on a date on or before the date of your next purchase. Wanting to sell before you buy is different. This is a smart decision so that you're not carrying two mortgages but it's something that you could do if the right home came along or for the convenience of the move. So we talk about your situation and whether you need to sell in order to buy or you just want to sell in order to buy. If you're paying cash, then this really isn't an issue. It's, it's much simpler because you don't have the bank's requirement involved, but if you're financing, this is very important to know. So if you are financing, you're going to take this information from your real estate agent about how much equity you have in your home and what you're expected to receive from your net proceeds. And you're gonna take that info to the lender and they will tell you combined with your credit and your debt to income ratio and everything else, what you're pre-approved for. They'll tell you how much money you need to be putting down in order to get the loan product that you want and what your budget is for shopping. And you'll bring this information back to your real estate agent. Step three is have a very candid conversation with your real estate agent. We are here to help you. We need to know what the situation is so that we can put you in the best position in negotiating and buying and selling. So in step four, we are going to design the outcome that we'd like to achieve. And this is important because when we list your home for sale on the MLS, we have the ability to set parameters with other agents and say, seller is looking for this, seller is willing to do this, seller will not do this, so that upfront, everyone is aware of your expectations. We're going to talk about the climate of the market and whether it's a buyer's market or a seller's market because that determines how easy or hard it's going to be to sell or buy. And just because you're selling in one market does not mean you're going to be buying in the other market. So let me give you an example of this. Here in Florida right now, we have a shortage of single family homes on the market, but there's an abundance of condos. So if you're selling a condo and buying a single family home, you're going to have a much tougher time selling and buying. Whereas if you were selling a single family home and moving into a condo, it would be much easier. So it's important that we understand the climate of the market because that helps us to know what to expect in terms of how long it's going to take to sell, how much competition we have in the selling or the buying process, and whether we're going to need to come in with full asking price or if we have some room to negotiate and what to expect in our position as, our, as a seller in the offers that'll be coming in. So all of these factors are important in determining our overall strategy. And so generally speaking, if you're moving up in price, it's going to be easier because the lower priced, more affordable homes always have more demand than the higher priced homes because there's more people who can afford to buy them. Step five is taking action. So after you've met with your agent, you've met with your lender, 
you've prepped your home and you know what to expect, then you take the first step in listing your home for sale. It's important to list your home for sale first before you make offers on properties because the chance that you're going to be able to purchase a home without your home even being on the market yet is very slim and it's only in rare circumstances with certain properties that you're able to do this. If it is a possibility, your agent will let you know. But 95% of the time, you need to be listing your home first. Now, if you're moving from one part of a city to another part, this isn't so hard to do. It's when you're crossing state lines or you're moving internationally that things get a little trickier. So I have a lot of my clients from out of state who want to know how this process works, what they should do first, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, the buyer or the sell, how do I do this? And this is what I advise them to do and what I get the best results with. So depending on where you are in the process, you need to determine whether the Fort Myers area in Southwest Florida is for you. You come down to Florida, you decide, yes, this is for me, go back up to Wisconsin, wherever, and you get your home on the market. Now, talk to your agent and let me know how many days you expect that home to be on the market. We will ramp up our eyes on the MLS, watching for anything that comes on. I can preview properties while you're there, but the key is to get your house under contract. When you receive an offer or multiple offers, Pay attention to the terms and the conditions of that offer, not just the price. It's important that you allow yourself enough time to be able to get down here and close on your next home. 45 days is generally a normal time frame, but you might require a little more or a little less depending on what your goals are. It's also important to pay attention to whether the buyer of your home is paying cash or they're financing. And if they're financing or sometimes cash, whether they have any other additional contingencies like a contingency to sell their home because that can set up a domino effect that you do not want to be wiped out with. So just pay attention to the offers you're receiving, whether they're cash or financing and whether they have additional contingencies that could affect your ability to buy. Once your home goes under contract, I recommend that you book a flight to return to Southwest Florida that is refundable and is about two weeks out. That way, if something happens and they cancel, you can reschedule that flight, but you're all set up at the best fare to be able to return to Florida as soon as you exit your inspection period. This is the magic time when you're able to come to the table with a pre-approval, with a contingency to sell, but you're past the inspection period, and better yet, if you're past the appraisal. The further along you are in the process of selling, the better position you'll be in for buying. Welcome, now you've arrived back in Florida, your house is under contract, you're past the inspection period, hopefully past appraisals, you've got a pre-approval letter in your hand, you know what your budget is, you know the areas that you'd like to live in, go out shopping, we write contracts and we execute a contract with a contingency to sell your home. It's important to follow this process because if you look for your next home first, chances are it won't be there when you're ready to make an offer. Step six is getting into the contract and it's really important to know what you're getting into. Our job as a real estate agent is to protect you. So going back to that candid conversation, we need to know what your needs and wants and expectations are so that we can protect you with things like a contingency to sell your home or certain dates that you need to be in by. So all of this is very important. It's also important that we're aware of the deadlines in your contract for selling your home. Now, the easiest thing is when you're using the same agent to buy and sell, but let's say you're moving from Wisconsin, we need to be able to communicate with that agent or at least have a copy of that contract so that we can see when your inspection period is up, when your appraisal contingency is up, all of those things so that we can protect you and your money and your deposit in the worst case scenario of a cancellation. 
There are so many scenarios here that it is impossible to cover them all. Anything is possible, but it's very important that everybody understands and agrees upon all of the aspects of the timing that they're in writing and that there is a way to enforce them. The last thing you wanna do is just say, well, I took the guy's word for it, I trusted him, and now I did the right thing and I got the short end of the stick. We don't want that to happen to you. That's why as real estate agents, we will take extra measures and precautions and follow protocol and make sure that there are measures in place to enforce the contract. So we're going to communicate about things like what stays and what goes, like TV brackets, curtains, things like that. Um, about the transfer of utilities, exactly when to turn off and turn on those utilities to avoid any interruption of power or problems. Um, going to talk about the pre-signing, anything that we can do in advance, and any last minute questions you have, the coordination of movers and just double checking things. So we will be communicating about all of these things to make the transaction as smooth as possible. Simultaneous closings are one of the most stressful real estate transactions you can do. They're the most complicated, totally doable, and well worth it. Let me know if you found any of this helpful and if there's any other topic that you'd like me to go into detail further on. Give me a call. I'd love to hear from you.